All right, so nice to see everybody. Oh, hush, buddy. Cross your shins, sit on something, add some height to your hips. Give your chance to start, regardless of what your day, your week has been. Start somewhere, start with something that is consistent. Something that lets you know that you're just starting something that is not an outside thing, but it's an inside. Cross the shins, one foot underneath each knee. Place the hands on top of your thighs, press your hands down, lift your spine chest up. Drop your shoulders. Press your hands hard again. Push your feet hard into the ground so there's a lift. Lift to the body. Exhale, draw your back ribs in, your side rib forward, and your front rib lift up. Eyes closed, chin slightly lifted. As you start to breathe in, recognize that you're about to begin the yoga practice. But are there also ways that you can remember that you have been practicing yoga, not just on the yoga mat, it, you know, it doesn't always have to be in front of the teacher, just in your day-to-day -day life. Are there moments when you catch yourself taking something off the mat and putting it somewhere else in the sense of you're doing your dishes, right? You're into Dawson and me. I like to bend over and pick things up in half moon. Do you ever apply a breathing technique to just your daily life? We dedicate our time on the mat to just the practice of this. The purification of the practice, not perfection, the clarity it brings us so that we can go out there and keep going. Not just maybe with yoga, but with lots of life. So if you catch yourself, my friends, doing a little bit of yoga off the mat, good. Recognize what is it about doing that pose is needed in that moment. What does that pose give you that you need in that time? Is it stability? Is it balance? Is it relief from pain and therefore happiness? How is your yoga practice off the mat? All the stuff you take with it. What is it helping you work through? Because we do not get on the mat to practice being ignorant or ignoring or distant from. But we're on the mat to refine the lens of ourselves. Or as Mr. Anger would say, we shine the multi multifaceted side of ourselves. So whatever comes through, we see. We block nothing, we hide nothing. So just as you practice on the mat tonight, my friends, and you feel the hamstring great, how does it make you feel? What are you, what are you getting out of this practice? Mentally, physically, and emotionally. And then just catch yourself as you go through this week, weekend. You're doing Tadasana in the dishes. You pick up something in half moon. What is that giving you? For me, when I go from half moon to pick something up, I feel safe in my hip. I'm working on why but at least I know what it's giving me. So I'm not just following my yoga practice blindly or my teachings blindly. I'm constantly in the living, breathing art of it all that changes and is questioned and challenged and looked at. And so I hope you do the same, my friends. So the living, breathing art of you comes out more. Bring the palms together at the chest, thumbs touching the sternum. Tongue away from the roof of the mouth. We'll ohm short, we'll ohm shortly three times and begin. Oh. 
Bow your head, salute the essence of yoga inside yourself. Bring the palms into the lap, let your head rise and your eyes open. Okay, it's so nice to see everybody. Some more people have joined us, it's always lovely. All right, stand, let's stand on up, let's do some work, get some heat. Grab your yoga blocks or a chair, have it nearby if you need support. Uh, for your hamstrings or your hips, have them around. And then bring your thighs together, feet together in Tadasana for a moment. Heels touching, calves coming close together. Hands off the hips, remember. And just be present. One of the things that's interesting about this pose, if you're just doing there, Really, you can't hide, cover, manipulate, or move everything. It's a pose that is just about being stable, being seen right there. You're supposed to look off into the middle distance, keep your eyes open. All right, and when you're in class, your teacher just sees you. No hiding, no popping your hands on the hips, no posturing. This is just pretty neutral. So just as your body's physically moving towards neutral, and you can see where stuff is chant different or hard in it. One hip's tight, one, you know, pressure in the feet are different. Check in your, with yourself mentally as time goes on in this pose. If each pose is providing certain things to us through its practice, right? Whether, you know, it, even it can be even emotional. Triangle pose makes me happy. Puts me back in that yoga place. When you get here, What's going on? Can you, out, can you take some of the stability that this pose offers and put it into the mental space, the emotional space? So regardless of what's going on, you're sending your train of thought and your mental emotional self towards the quality of this pose, stability. Do not let all the things that you could be doing in this pose take you away from that. Sure, you know you could Balance all the weight in your foot. You can squeeze all the calf thigh together. Push your thighs back, draw your hips in. Pull your bottom ribs back, lift your chest up. Draw your shoulders wide. You can do all that. You can just go through checklists and there's dozens of them. But if going through all of those does not let the pose you're in create a get to the mo emotional intellectual self, then we're not really doing it with our whole part, our whole self. Just be aware as you go through, sure, there's a lot of variations. There's a lot of stuff your body's going to say. You got to listen to it. But you also got to listen to the pose. What's the pose trying to offer you mentally, emotionally, not just physically? If it's just physics you're looking for, you know, take an anatomy class. You're here for something different. You're here to see what's going on on a different level than just my hip, my hamstring. That's not true. Some of you might only be here for your hip and hamstring. We'll get to your hip and hamstring. Don't worry. But just check in. We'll see what happens and past that. All right. Stand wide, three and a half to four foot apart. Turn your right toes out. Stretch the arms out wide before you go to the bent knee. Extend your arms like you've extended your legs. Exhale, bend the right knee. Step much wider, Meshuba. You're very tall. <laughs> wider, dear. <laughs> there you go. Now bend your knee. Look out over your right arm. Don't worry about the computer. You'll hear me. I'll, yeah, I'll start yelling so you can all hear me how far you are away. Look out over your right arm. Direct your gaze with the whole of the head, not just pulling your eyes to the corners but stretch through the whole spine, lifting and rotating the head as you push down through your left leg, shifting your body weight into it. Take a couple breaths. 
Feel the aspects of this pose that are having an effect on you. Your thigh might burn, your hip might cramp, shoulders might be tired. And where are you doing mentally, emotionally? Check in with yourself. What does this pose give you that you need? And usually if you have a negative emotion come up about it, that's not tied to like a pain moment in, in your body, that's probably what you're trying to deny yourself. If I get angry in this pose, pose is trying to show me how to be happy with myself because I'm working on me. Straighten your leg, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. Try to keep your arms if you can. When you get your legs pushed through the right heel, push through the left foot, then bend that knee and glide that left thigh out. So as you glide, stretch that left thigh forward, pushing down through the right foot, pushing the right foot forward a little bit like you're trying to drag the yoga mat. Lift the spine up, not back, up. Stretch the head up and then rotate to look out over the left arm. Even though this is a pose we're using to warm up for some other challenging work, it does not mean it does not deserve all your attention and focus. Because the pose is working on all of you. Straighten the leg, keep the legs, keep the arms if you can. Stretch out over your left leg as far as you could reach uti, towards Uttahita Trikonasana, taking your right hand, uh, left hand down, right arm straight up. If you need a block, it's okay, grab it, grab a chair, get your tools that you need. Don't put your hand on your shin, I don't like that. Put the hand on the block or on the floor, one of the two. My issue with pushing your hand on your shin is it teaches bad ankle habits. So with your right arm nice and up long in the air, can you stretch your right arm as much as your right leg? Your right leg's nice and straight, so stretch your right side long. Your left side, if it feels crunched, push through the left foot, push the left foot forward like you're dragging the yoga mat. Nice extension, everybody and then stretch the spine long. From the glutes, dragging away from your low back so they tuck slightly, to the length to the back bottom ribs, lifting to the shoulders, the head stretching away from the, the neck, and then slight rotation, even for a few seconds, right? The muscles tight, weak, hard, you gotta start moving it. Bring the body up, left toes in, right toes out. Once your legs are set, push through the heels, drag the yoga mat, stretch out over that right side, pulling that left hip or the right hip towards the left. And then once you've extended, go on down. And I'll get, I'm, of course, as you can hear, I'm giving some adjustments, some things to, to, to look into, look into to engage your body. But can you pay attention to, again, what I was saying? What are you getting out of this pose? Or what are you fighting against in this pose in a way? Sometimes when I get into yoga poses, I'm upset with myself. I haven't done even more yoga or that I have pain at all or if I have these injuries and issues. So I'm fighting against this negativity of myself. So can you feel what's going on in your body and then check in with yourself mentally, emotionally? And does that even cause a stirring of feelings? It's not about having a correct answer. It's actually just about asking, looking inward. Because I promise you, if you're scared to move your body, you're holding it tight. And if you're holding your body tight, you're not, oh, your body's not gonna physically get the best out of all this work. So just check in with yourself, see what's going on. And can you let go of something just to then focus more on yourself? Like, I've got a little bit of worry about my hip. I'm just going to trust it for a moment. I've got a little bit of stress in my neck. I'm going to look down and be nice to it and relieve it, but then challenge it again. So you create a better 
mental emotional habit as well as physical. Bring the body up, turn the right toes in, turn your left toes out. Place both hands on your hips, rotate your right pelvis forward towards your left foot, rotating the right thigh in, but pushing through the outer heel as best you can. So it's an extension and rotation of the leg. Leg goes long, leg twists, and then bend your left knee. Push down through that foot, drag that foot away, drag that foot forward. Chest up nice and tall. Stretch both arms up. Palms facing in, complete the pose as you continue to rotate from the navel and the chest. But then when you're in it, stop worrying about all the little techniques and little twists and torques. Check in with you. How does this body make your knee feel, your hip feel, your back feel? Try to keep your arms in line with your rib cage. Exhale, lay forward, laying your abdomen onto your thigh with your arms stretched straight out. If your hands happen to touch a wall, good for you. <laughs> Take use of it. Take a nice deep breath in, pick your arms up a little higher, but keep your chest low. Challenge your chest to have to stretch and open. Exhale, bring your body all the way back up and you might wobble, you might fall. Try to keep your knee bent. Bring your arms down, turn your left toes in, turn your right toes out. Hands on the hips, rotate the pelvis. Nice long legs. Push down through the left heel, through the right heel, stretch the legs nice and long. Push through the yoga mat. Act like your legs are going to drag that yoga mat wide. Like that. There you go. Bend the knee as you drag on that yoga mat. Stretch both arms up. Strong legs help keep the steadiness in the next part. Stretch forward, laying the abdomen and chest towards the thigh with your arms nice and long. Best you can. Good job, Helena. <laughs> Little lower pratima. Step your left foot back farther, friend, unless you've got an injury going on. Take your whole belly to your thigh bone if you can. Everybody. And then keep your belly and chest there. Pick your arms up, but keep your chest moving down so your chest must open. Exhale, bring your body up. Bring your arms down, turn your toes in. Take both hands onto the floor in front of you. Standing straddle stretch, Poseidon Podatanasana. If you cannot touch the floor, it's okay to use blocks or chairs, whatever you need books. Legs are nice and long, pushing the thighs and hips back. And then walk your hands back. If the more, the lower you want to go, it's not just about getting, bending your elbows, but walk your hands back in line with your feet. So your body weight has to stay in your legs and not leaning into your toes. And bend the elbows a little bit if you want. Let your chest draw down. But when you let your chest draw down, also let your back ribs draw down in the same way. So it's not just about your back gripping, pushing your chest forward and down. That's down dog. That's a different pose. Take a breath. Let your bottom ribs float so you can feel like your back ribs widen away from the spine and then come down towards the armpit. Or if you think about it, if someone put their fingertips on your bottom ribs and pulled them towards your shoulder blades. Activate your back to extend, not to pull your hamstrings tighter, and it probably will, 
but to try and let that back muscle relax, widen, and then move away from the lower back. Don't grip your, don't grip your back muscles to hold it straight. Stretch your back and your lower back and drag your ribs away from your lower lumbar as your feet push into the floor. Take a breath, bring your body up. Turn your right toes out, turn your left toes in. Rotate your left hip towards the right. Take your right hand back behind you and your left hand back behind you and grab your left wrist. Push your right wrist that should be touching your lower back into your back and your sacral plate. Push your left hand into the right palm. Exhale, stretch forward, keeping the legs as straight as you can and down. Arms lot to nozzle, chest to knee. And you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna fold and then everything else kind of stops. That's mostly where you're trying to hold your spine straight. Can we go over the hand uh, position again? Right hand grabs your left wrist behind your back. So the back of your right hand touches your sacral plate or your lower back, somewhere in that range. Right hand presses into your low back, left wrist presses into your right hand. When you stretch forward, you're extending out and you start to go down, there's a point where you just stop. This is not a pose where you're supposed to be straight in your spine. This is not a straight, I should say. The same thing from our last pose applies. This is how we start broadening and changing all that upper back muscle. Take a breath, let your abdomen suck towards your low back. So first off, you feel your low back lift and widen. Then go to your back bottom ribs. Take a breath, pull your front ribs to the back one so the back widens and then stretch those back ribs towards the shoulder blades, letting your chest come down. There is no thing about keeping the spine straight, lifted, extended, sure but straight is an angle that human beings are not. So don't be afraid to breathe, let your head come down, and but broaden your shoulders. Let your chest come down, stretch your ribs away from your lower back. Because the minute you try to hold rigidness in your spine, your legs and your hips go out of balance because that's not what our spine is supposed to be. Now we, tired, you can get tired, sure. But if you work from a broad, spine that is mobile, the legs can be a little more mobile. Bring your leg, bring your chest up. This is the same principle we've done all of our seated poses off of. Switch your feet, whichever which way you want. I'm not gonna tell you to turn this and out. You can just switch your legs. So your left foot will be in front of you, your right foot behind you. Left hand grabs right wrist. Yes. <laughs> so the back of your left hand is pressing into your low back sacral plate. Right wrist is pressing in there to move those shoulders back a little. Exhale, light push through the legs, extend over the legs. Leg. So when you extend and move the body out, you fold, you're folding from the hips already, challenging your hips and hamstrings. Great, and once they've gone as far as they can, Take a breath, and it's not about truncating down. You're not crunching the front, but you're pulling the front muscles to the back. So take a belly breath, let it stretch and move with the inhale. Exhale, draw it back a little. Then pick your, so your low back lifts. And then do the same with your front ribs. These front bottom ribs below the pec muscles, pull back and lift the lower, the mid back. So then stretch your mid back towards your shoulder blades. Stretch it away from your low back. So that when we do our seated folds, when we do all that work, we can really get into the upper back muscles and the core muscles that hold our spine up. You wanna get your hips to move? Notice you're getting a very deep stretch here. The more you take your ribs towards your shoulders, your head drops, but your shoulders go wide. 
your chest comes down, but you're stretching the back towards the blade. Your hips get deeper work. <laughs> Tongue trails. Yes, she says, roll your right hip forward. <laughs> the more our spine moves, the more the rest of the body responds in kind. Exhale, bring the body up. It's pretty good. Don't think so. Grab a bolster blankets or blocks or whatever you do with your seated pose. On the floor, stretch your legs out. Those down. You'll see a little better. So as you have a seat, stretch both legs out in front of you and then doss in for a moment. Or five. And Now we've transitioned from a different kind of gravity on the body. We've also transitioned from a posture that has different meaning for us. Sitting is a much different kind of comfort or work than standing is. So remember to keep that in mind. Fingertips next to the bolster, elbows bent. Lift your chest up. Go for the extension. So you've only used the arms at this time. Push your heels down. Even if you feel your knees bend a little bit, I would rather have Slightly bent knees, but strong connection pushing the heel and the leg into the ground so you're getting stronger thighs. You're not pushing from the softness of your knee joint, but you're working the thigh muscle itself. Continue to push your heels down. Push your hips down into the bolster. And then stretch both arms straight up. Try to keep all of this to create the extension higher. Take that breath, pull the joint into the socket. Remember the arms do not float out of the socket. They pull down and in. So you have to lift your shoulder blades. There you go. Strong legs, even if the knees are bent. Don't worry about straight. But I'm not. Straight will just happen. Take your arms down. Take your right hand to your outer left thigh. Take your left arm, stretch it straight up again. Into the socket, right? The shoulder doesn't go out and up, so it pulls to the shoulder, it pulls in and down, so you have to lift the shoulder blade. Bend your right elbow, pulling to the right, so you can help twist to the left as best you can. Rotate as much as you possibly can. So this is a nice lift to straight spine. Stretch your left arm out and away from you towards the back side of the, your room. Palm down, bicep up, like warrior two arm. And stretch that arm. Just as you're pulling with that right hand, that left arm is extending from the shoulder blade out. And then are your feet still working? Are your legs still working? I say no. Push your heels down, push your hips down so that any twist you get comes from the back muscles moving. You're not forking your hips. You're just letting the whole rib cage rotate and all that stuff you're fighting in there has got to get worked on and move. So don't feel bad or don't, I wouldn't feel bad or I wouldn't think that, well, I'm not doing anything because I'm not going deep. Hold it for 10 more seconds and tell me you're not doing something. It's going to be more than 10 seconds, so you'll really get a nice feel for it. Take a breath, extend. You're going to be here a while. Push through the heels. What are you fighting in this physically? What's the mental emotional? You remember, if you say, I, I feel nothing, I'm totally blank, I'm going to call uh, shenanigans. <laughs> no one's blank, everyone's lying. All right, untwist. Left hand to right, outer right side, right arm up. Extend the spine. Pull the shoulder joint in and down into the socket. And then rotate by pulling the left elbow hard to the left. It's lifted slightly to open up that left shoulder blade. Harder. And then stretch the right arm out and away from you. Palm down, bicep up. 
So rolling that arm up, that palm turns down, and then stretch from that right shoulder blade. You felt move when you had to pick the arm up out away from your body. And then work your legs and check in where are your legs at. Are they both working? Or is one set of toes run off to Starbucks? Push your heels down, your hips down. Keep that stable so any twist you get or don't get is 100% honestly what's just going on in your back and body. And see what's going on in there. Deep breath in, slow breath out. Few more seconds. All right, untwist. Bring the soles of the feet together and the knees wide, Baddha Konasana. Push the heels in. Push the pinky toe side of the foot hard into the floor so there is some lift to the extension of the spine. Take your left hand to your right knee. Stretch your right arm straight up again. Extend lift. Pull the shoulder joint into the socket and down. Bend the left elbow, twist to your right, any degree you can. And then stretch the arm back. There you go. Well done, Chaya. Once you've twisted a little bit, then you get to the fun part. We've already done this with the leg straight. So see which foot doesn't want to press hard, push both in equally, and then bend your left elbow some more. And then instead of twisting deeper, Lean your left side of your body towards the floor like one day your left shoulder may lay on the floor and stretch your right arm more up towards the ceiling. So not only are you rotating, you're bending laterally like a revolved triangle, right? Or a side angle to stretch that upper back. So even if you go a little bit forward, you'll start to feel something move. Yes, dear? It's a lot. Tristan said it's a lot. The more stretch you want, the more you bend your left elbow and pull your left elbow and shoulder towards the floor. I'm not saying you have to take it. Bring your body up. Switch hands. Left arm up. Rotate. Stretch the arm out. Then as you rotate, three or four deep breaths, really get into your body. And then on your third or fourth exhale, move that right side of the body just forward. Trying to keep the twist. So you challenge those back muscles to have to twist and then stretch long, widening the right side a lot. And also the connection of your low back into your hips. Some of that stuff that keeps the spine from feeling like you can lift up is that those tight hip muscles. So you're working that out. All right. <laughs> Exhale, bring your bodies up. Stretch your left leg straight, right foot pressing to or touching inner left thigh. So John Yushashasa. So when you start in John Yu here, the thing we want to take away from it is the difference between the seated with both legs straight and then Bodhikanasana twist. There's twists that you do in this pose. We're going to work this one and then the next to really get our back muscles moving quite a bit. So first, Take a nice breath in, stretch forward, use a strap to either grab your left foot or both hands can grab your left foot. Whichever is most comfortable for you, hands or strap, as long as your leg is long and you're not feeling strained and you can't take a deep breath into this. And the reason I emphasize kind of the awareness of what our yoga practice is doing to us, 
on the mat and off is that yoga practice is yoga practice is not going to help is not going to help get you the things that you want if you're fighting it all the time or you're fighting doing it all the time you got to let yourself have that little bit of go in it but I'm preaching to the choir. You're already here. So while you're here, you're in the forward fold. To whatever degree you're in the forward fold, right hand will hold the strap or the foot by itself. Take your left arm, lift it up into the air, not out to the side, out in front of you up. Like that. Take your right elbow, bend your right elbow out to the right so you feel that shoulder and lift that elbow up so you feel that shoulder elbow armpit lift. And then roll your left ribs towards the ceiling. Taking your left arm up as best you can. Even if you're only getting just the lightest little torque, try to pull that left shoulder into the socket and then lift that left shoulder blade up so it helps you twist. That's good. Everyone's doing really nice. Nice job. Take a breath. Get your right hip to help. If your right hip is pushing, is touching the bolster, push your right hip harder. If your right foot is touching the floor, push the right foot harder. And then bend that right arm and twist. For some of you, it might feel like it's easier to go downward because now you're stretching and lengthening one side of the back. It may put a lot of stretch in the twist hip hamstring, but exhale, come on up. This is why I'm trying to point out that by holding our spine rigid and locked in our poses, we are going to compensate. It's going to really change our ability to move. It's okay to experiment with twisting and moving your back as long as you don't create tension in your neck or pain in your low back. Oh my God, it's, it's great. Switch legs. We have talked about before. You go look at the pictures of the old teachers. Their backs are very wide and their upper backs are rounded and sometimes, and then they stand up normal and their posture is wonderful. Good posture is not rigid. Good posture is, posture is naturally going to the state. Stretch forward. Left foot touching right thigh. I won't pontificate anymore. I've talked a lot. And then check in, you know, what are you fighting in the pose? The hips tight, the hamstrings tight, your back's tight. You're worried about your back, where all that's tied up. There's some parts you just kind of exhale and just let move. So whatever rigidness you're holding kind of even begins to think about moving or for some of us can let go. Early on in my yoga practice, I think it was about year three, four-ish, I started to get the idea that I could actually just exhale and let stuff go, that I didn't have to stay gripped and tight. I didn't have to keep forcing it. I've been working really hard. All the stuff already did. It all could move. So you got to move. All right. Left hand holds the foot. I said I'd stop talking. Right arm stretches up as best you can. So you challenge that shoulder blade, that upper back to flex. Bend the left elbow wide, same direction your left knee is pointing. And then as you bend it, twist your right ribs back into your right. Still stretching the arm up, stretching the shoulder blade away from the rib cage. And then push your left foot harder into the floor. Push your left hip harder into the bolster and rotate any degree more. You can bend that left elbow a little bit, Ryan. Come on. There you go, buddy. Thank you. So there's the twist. There's your upper back moving. Good. And the elbow bend is important on that left arm. I know some of you can just let your hand and arm hang out on the floor, but pulling with that left arm, even if you don't need it, and bending that left elbow is what changes up into the, the upper back muscles. That's what challenges this. Not just your hamstrings, but all of it. Take a breath, bend that left elbow. There, Chai, there you go, friend. Nice back. Take a couple more breaths, get some out of it. Nice long holds, but it's the end of the week. It's exhausting. Time to get a little deeper, but bring your bodies up. <laughs> you all right? Everyone okay? 
if any of you were making the noise that she was making, that was exhaustingly hard. <laughs> I probably deserve to be like whipped. Come off the bolster. So you're going to take your bolster or your blankets and blocks and set to the side. Have a seat on the floor with both legs straight. So I said we do the second form. What the second twist is actually the 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 opposite twist. What we were just doing. This is more of a twist towards lateral than a twist towards uh, bardva or hip and back. So if you watch Tristan for just a sec, I'll go through the actions. Bend your left knee. Pull your foot back. When you pull your left foot back, take your hand onto your inner knee and pull your knee and hip back. So Tristan's gonna let her whole hip flex open. So now her groin is kind of pointing a different, different direction. That way she can bring her left foot towards her groin, but her left foot does not touch her inner right thigh. So we start the twist off very similar to what you just did. Both hands reach for the foot. Watch for just a second more. I'm giving you a chance to stretch out. She grabs the foot. Even if you use a strap, that's OK. So this is a much different. This will stretch from the left shoulder all the way down to the right hip. This is a cross stretch, which is basically what you just did. And then it changes to an open chested stretch. So last few seconds. Right hand goes to the inner right foot. The hand goes up top. Bend the elbows wide. That's the twist. So it goes from a twist in to a twist out. Don't worry about going down super low. She's, she's doing a lot of good work. Untwist a little. But worry more about how you can bend your elbows. The pulling on the foot and this action to open your back is what will eventually allow deep rotation. One day, don't worry. All right, up again. So right leg out, left leg back. Let's get there. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Tristan, for demoing another torturous pose. So when you pull that left foot back, make sure your left heel and left foot are not touching your inner right groin. And I'll say, if this hurts to sit on the floor like this at this point, because your back's tight, your hamstrings are tight, it's OK now to put stuff under your hips. Like once you get your feet in place, it's OK to lean forward and prop yourself up. It's, it's, this is not something that has to be done on the floor. And then when you're ready, exhale, stretch. Grab the foot with the strap or your hands. Try to keep both legs nice and long, or the, the right leg nice and long. Keep your left knee nice and bent and active. Pushing your right heel into the floor, the left knee and left foot into the floor. And I know I've said this for months now. I've been saying some of the same alignments and triggers for months to try and hit home how much this can actually change a lot of the structure. But we're doing lots of different, I'm trying to do lots of different poses to give you different ways of feeling it. So grab hold. And now take a breath, take your right hand towards the inside of the, the strap or foot. You grab the inner strap or inner part of the foot and the left hand grabs like the toes or the other side of the strap and pause. Don't even twist yet. Just hold that with your arms crossed and bend your elbows. Bend your elbows wide so you feel how your upper back has to round a little bit. Because if you're holding your spine rigid and you bend your elbows, it's going to pull you into it. Not because it's pulling you down, but because it's dragging your upper back forward. So work on bending the elbows and then take a breath. Pull your left elbow up to the ceiling. Roll it first. Good. And then your left shoulder and your left ribs. And even if you don't go very far, keep the bend of the elbows. Never let yourself get into the rigid spine. Elongated, yes. Engaged, yes. Active legs, not rigid. Allow for always being able to move in and out of a pose. Holding a pose until you get so achy and hard, even if it's you've held the pose for a second or five minutes, I've never heard that you have to be solid as a rock in yoga afterwards, right? Everything we hear about after classes and after poses are, I feel so loose, I feel so light, I feel so good. Take a breath, untwist, stretch your left leg out next to your right, and then pull your right leg back. Well done, everybody. So even if you're like, your pose is just, you're kind of stuck up here at this height, you can still do this to start opening your upper back. You can widen and stretch that space. Don't worry about forward, forward and down will happen. 
When you pull your right knee back, make sure your right foot does not touch your inner left thigh. And then exhale, stretch out, grab. Push your left heel down, right foot down. And just even hold this. This is a wonderful stretch. This is a twist. Your pelvis is twisted one way, your ribs are twisted the other. So can you let this twist be its own thing? Don't jump to the next pose. So what did you learn from the past twisting? Bending the elbows, broadening of the upper back, opens your back to better rotation. Even when it's in between poses, it's still something to get into place. Just as sometimes when you're doing yoga at home, or doing your, doing your daily stuff and you sneak in that Tadasana or you get that hand, hand, uh, uh, half moon in. Because <laughs> you need something out of it. Even if you don't know what it is yet. Right. Take a breath, take your left hand to the inside of the foot, take your right hand, grab them toes, bend the elbows, rotate as best you can by first bending wide, go wide, then the right elbow floats up. Even just a little, it's like, you know, you pull and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stretched down. You kind of pull that left elbow up and you start, start finding the way that it can move one day. Just don't give up on you. Giving up, getting out of a pose because it hurts, great. Don't get out because you're just tired. If you can get two more seconds, get two more seconds. If you're done and you're going to fight it and you're going to hate it, Maybe hold one more second and then get out. <laughs> but always check in with what this is for you. Take another breath. Exhale, untwist. Whew. Good. <laughs> Stretch both legs out straight. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh, please. With your left ankle over your right thigh, bend your left knee, or bend your left ankle over right thigh, excuse me, bend your right knee and pull your right foot under your left knee. So all that Padmasana work. So even if this is as far as you get, you're good, right? Toes are pointed. This is art of Padmasana, half Padmasana. A lot of stretching and twists you can do from here. Eventually they lead into a backward bend, but that's for later. So from here, take both hands onto the floor in front of you if you can. Just even a little bit of lean forward to get, get forward into the pose is good. But point your feet, push your feet into your thigh and into the floor. Don't worry about pushing your knees down, but actively push the feet down to engage your hips and to allow you to widen and lengthen your lower back. Take those belly breaths to soften the abdomen and then pull the abdomen back so you feel your low back widen and then extend forward any greater degree and pause. A lot of tonight has been about how we can extend the spine to release the low hips and low back and the legs, and then vice versa. They're both connected in that action. Seated poses are fascinating. They are not boring because if you give yourself really kind of, a, you can explore lots of different aspects of the, the back body with them. And your hips, right? It's mostly the hips. So take both hands to your left foot left side, sliding them along the floor as far as you can take them. Now, don't go all the way past your knee. I shouldn't say as far as you can take them, but go from in front of you to at least in the direction your left knee is pointing. Push your feet down. And then if you want more, your left hand or your right hand, excuse me, right hand grabs your right foot or your left knee, one of those two. Grab the knee if you can. Bend the right elbow out to the right. 
and stretch the right elbow down so you feel the right rib, right shoulder blade pull away from the spine. Take your left hand, put it on your left thigh near your hip or middle of thigh and twist your left ribs up by pushing your left hand down. Elbows are bent, right? The right elbow's bending is what's pulling on the leg that's stretching that right backside. And then take your left arm, float it straight up, stretching the shoulder blade towards the hand. Your elbow may not touch the floor, who cares? You're still moving it in that rotational action to use the strength of the arm, pulling the shoulder blade through. Good. Exhale, bring the body up. <laughs> Good. Switch legs. After you've switched legs, take a moment, exhale, go forward a little. So you start to kind of get the motion. Take a deep, take a few deep belly breaths. And then when you're ready, exhale, draw the navel back towards the spine. Not hardening the gut, right? You're not crunching. But you're just hollowing the stomach. So your low back muscles have to flex and uh, have to lift and widen. And then you may go out a little further, stretching your back ribs towards your shoulder blades. Don't hold your spine rigid. Take both hands towards your right side, right knee, knee a area, still in the forward stretch. So you get that lateral back. So again, like John Yu and revolve John Yu, you're getting all that same back hip stuff, but now you're in the seated pose. You're deep down into the action of the hips and the back. Push the feet into the floor so you're still stable in your legs and pelvis. And then if you want more, let, left hand grabs right knee. Pull on that knee to stretch the elbow towards the floor. So you feel the shoulder blade, upper back have to move. Even if it doesn't move a lot, you kind of feel like that's going to get it to go. Press the right hand on your right thigh. Rotate as best you can. And then once you've rotated, float your right arm up, but make your left arm continue to do the work of that rotation. Beautiful job. And breathe. Get this nice lateral back opening action all the way through your hips. If you work, if you, if you ever feel like you have trouble sitting upright, this is very good stuff to do to change your whole seated posture. Those of you that have back issues or work with people that feel like you're slouching posture or you get compressed all day, this whole series has been really part of correcting that. I've been actually teaching you uh, about an 83 pose series that I have worked out. I've been teaching you sections of it over the past few months. <laughs> Stretch that right arm high, bend that left elbow. Exhale, up you come. Nice job. Okay. Stretch your legs out. Head wrapped around. Bend your right knee, pull your right foot under your left thigh. Reach down, bend your left knee towards your body, grabbing your left foot with both hands. So we've done this before where we extend, we hold the leg up and we lean into it, we stretch the leg out. There's gonna be a twist. So if you can, just kind of sit here for a moment, watch Tristan. I have to look, I have to keep my, try and keep my face on the camera here. Tristan's gonna pick her foot up in front of her She's gonna pull, she's gonna bend her elbows wide, sound familiar, pull the knee into the chest. And then she's gonna take a breath and lean forward slightly so she's not falling back. So her upper back has to flex, her abs have to flex. Now, this is where we could straighten the leg up into the air, right? We're not, we, we can, I'm gonna give you the option too. But the, the important part is this part. She's gotta flex her thigh and keep her thigh connected to her chest. Want to see the look she was giving me. And then she's going to stretch her left arm straight up. She's going to twist. 
stretch the arm out. <laughs> and then she's going to stretch the leg up. <laughs> it's like a seated revolve triangle, right? All right, untwist. So right foot under your left thigh, both hands get your left foot, pick your foot up, point the toes. Pull the chest, pull the thigh deep into the chest, pull your chest deep to the thigh, get both and lean forward a little bit so you feel the groin have to flex, the thighs have to flex. Take your left arm straight up if you can. And if you hold here, that's okay. This can be your pose. You can even twist a little bit, bend the elbows a little bit. Stretch the left arm out as you keep bending the right elbow, but don't let your thigh come away from your chest. Try to keep it connected on its own string. It is exhausting and hard. Head up. And then if you want more, stretch your leg up, but keep your right elbow deeply bent. Never let your elbow go straight. Head up here. Woo. The good thing about the hand behind you is if you're near a wall, you can put your hand on a the wall. There you go, Shuba. Good for you, dear. Nice balance, Helena. You're rocking it. Try a chest up, dear. Thigh up, thigh up, pull, bend, use that strong arm. There you go. Lena. You did you worked good. Good job. Untwist. Switch legs. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. It's a... Bend your knees, slide your left foot under your right thigh. Pull your right knee to your chest. Both hands grab the foot, pick the foot up. Bend the elbows, thigh to chest, chest to thigh, lean forward. This has all been building. So again, check in with yourself. Don't just go blindly through it. It's a lot, but just because you're going through a lot doesn't mean you don't have feelings about it. Exhale, left arm up, twist, arm out, right, right arm up. I'm sorry, I'm a doofus. Right leg's in the air, left hand holds the leg, right arm up. I got twisted around. Which is funny for the teacher to put finger around his head. Roll your right ribs to the right, stretch your right arm out. And then if you want, you got to keep that left elbow bent. You push the leg into the hand so it must lift. Woo! And everything's working. Tristan says her left foot's cramping and it's only just hanging out on the floor. She, she's pushing it down, she says. Take two more breaths. And your second exhale, out you go. Lay down, take Savasana. And then let your eyes close, tongue away from the roof of the mouth. All those good things. Check in with yourself. What did you get? What did you create from your practice? Things of what you need out there in the rest of your world. Not just the pose, but the confidence, the spirit, the energy, the faith in whatever you choose to believe in, what is there for you. And can you hold on to that and remember that regardless of what's happening in your world or, the, or all of our world, that if you need those things, it's not that you have to wait till Tuesday or Thursday or whenever your class is that you are the living practice, you're the living art, that you do Tadasan at the kitchen sink, that I pick up something in Half Moon that's living in that, that in all moments you are creating what your needs are so you can keep going because you are living, breathing art, all of us. So rest my friends for the next few moments till I ring the bell and enjoy the fruits of your yogic practice.